Hello there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosell here, bringing you this video today a couple of days uh, after Purim in Jerusalem. Always one of the most exciting and joyous days of the calendar. Here in Jerusalem, Purim is celebrated one day after Purim in the rest of the Jewish world and in the rest of Israel. It has to do with the technicality about the fact that at the time of uh, Joshua, as in the biblical Joshua, Jerusalem was a walled city, which is why uh, Tel Aviv does Purim a day ahead of us here in Jerusalem. And of course on Purim, it's traditional. There's lots and lots of people out on the streets uh, listening to the Megillah being read, dressing up in costumes. And this year I had a very, very last minute choice of costumes because I visited the ancient Nabataean city of Avdat a couple of days ago. For those who are interested in ancient civilizations and history, check out my, vid my video about Avdat. It's about three or four uh, video uploads ago on this channel. Really interesting place. Uh, the Nabataeans are much, much better known for their famous desert city of Petra, but the incense route actually traveled from uh, Petra. Actually, I'm for talking about frankincense all the way from Oman through modern day Saudi Arabia. The BBC have an amazing five part documentary you can find on YouTube for free. It's called The Frankincense Route. I highly recommend it. But part of the incense route to travel through what is today Israel and Jordan uh, went from Petra in Jordan, stopped in Avdat, which is one of the stations on the incense route, and then wound up in Gaza, which was then a seaport. Now it could still be a seaport, but it's under a uh, military siege due to the political situation there, which we will also save for another day. But um, because I was just in Avdat and thinking about incense and spices and whatnot, uh, I decided to go on a bit of an incense learning journey over the past few days and got a few costume ex accessories but also came across a really interesting brand of incense products which i uh, decided that i would show in today's video so firstly if you're looking for incense in the old city it is everywhere in the christian quarter this is a tub of frankincense uh, that i picked up but i don't know much about the quality there are dozens of uh, stores catering to you know religious pilgrims um, and uh, it's it's interesting. I, I wanted I want to just unpack this a little bit in this video, but it's interesting to me that frankincense and all these resinous spices, which were such an integral part of Jewish religious worship in biblical times and the times of the temple, these days they're so associated with uh, Christianity. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I just think it's a pity that uh, they've really fallen out of favor and practice among Jews. So uh, in my quest to rediscover the world of incense and resin incense, I picked up a supply of uh, frankincense resin from Zach's Jerusalem Gifts. I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. sure it's the best place to buy it, but they have a Facebook presence. I also picked up this little thurible, which my friend who's in, who is into incense described as a Disneyland thurible. But uh, for the sake of Purim, it did the part. Um, so I got that and I also got a little supply of uh, charcoals. And that's really the secret formula is you light your charcoals, you put them in a metal incense burner like this, um, something I learned from uh, people more advanced in the uh, resin, incense resin world than me is you're supposed to wait till the coals are nice and uh, grey and then you add conservatively your frankincense uh, resin which I have a supply to last a while for now. However, on Purim itself I met someone uh, very interesting, a friend of a friend and she told me about this guy called Yigal Adiv and he has a company called desert sense and desert sense incense now just important uh to say firstly this is not promotion for yigal i just met him for the first time in fact and it just seemed very fortuitous that was my journey into incense i met someone else into uh incense and felt the same way to me that it's a pity that the use of incense in uh in the jewish world has completely fallen uh by the wayside there is a reason for that people are there's a prohibition in Judaism against recreating what's called Shemen Meshicha, which is anointing oil. It says in the Jewish Bible that Moshe 
used a very, very specific type of oil. And out of an abundance of caution, the practice of anointing oil has kind of fallen out of favor in uh, in Judaism and alongside really with incense. But uh, there is a, such a long tradition of it in this part of the world. And desert scents in desert scent incense, this guy Yigal, travels uh, around the world in order to source quality incense because i understand that in the world of incense there is something of a quality control problem there's a lot of you know dubious incense in the market stuff it's really bad synthetic ingredients you don't want to be inhaling i will say that as a asthmatic i'm i'm generally incense is something i reserve for very occasional use um, I think there are studies saying that it's, uh, you know, if you have some kind of a, a respiratory condition, it's probably best not to get in the habit of using incense. But now and again, I believe all things in moderation can be healthy. So this guy you got, I also bought uh, from a store, this lovely uh, olive, uh, olive tree wood incense holder, which is just a slab of olive tree, but he's got a little uh, bolt here uh, that fits his uh, incense sticks and uh, really, really nice guy. And he's happy to talk you through the products he's, he uh, he sells. He comes to the market in Jerusalem, which is the market on Betzalel Street, uh, every couple of weeks. He's got a Facebook and an Instagram, which I'll link to. Again, not out of any vested interest to promote him or promote his stuff, uh, but rather because I think it's interesting that there is a Jewish guy in Israel uh, who's really into sort of source and quality incense and sort of bringing, bringing that tradition back, if you will. So he also, uh, you got very kindly labeled it for uh, 60 shackles, which is about $15. He sells you a box of 10 and he has them all laid out. I'll add a couple of photos into this video uh, at his market stall so you can pick out different kinds of incense. And something I actually uh, thought was quite clever as well was on the incense box. There's a little hole uh, for you to put the incense. So even if you don't want to buy a little ornate incense holder like he sells, uh, you can just use the box or you can use, of course, your own incense stick holder uh, in order to uh, hold your incense. So uh, what I got here is I... Uh, being interested in incense because of its connection to everything biblical, I was I was I opted very heavily for frankincense, which is really what I was interested in. Frankincense in in Hebrew is called levona. In Arabic, it's called uh, I believe, and people can correct me. It's uh, il labun. Uh, so Bukhur, which is the burning of incense, has a big tradition in Arabic. And if you go to the old city of Jerusalem, you'll meet a lot of Christian Arab merchants. Uh, but it's often the case that words in Hebrew and Arabic are almost the same. So I've gone here for black frankincense, light black frankincense, two kinds of incense, uh, frankincense, incense with pine and cardamom, white purification, which I believe has some uh, white sage in it brown, purple, uh, and I can't read. I got a couple for my wife as well because uh, she is not a she is not a fan of the scent of the smell of frankincense. So uh, we uh, picked them out together and I went for like four or five uh, frankincense and frankincense based ones and then a few more that uh, she would find more appealing. So I'm going to actually go ahead and start out my uh, incense here and uh, show you guys the box that they come in, which is very nice. And I'm going to go for one of my plain frankincense ones which were uh black and i don't know how long these are going to burn for but he said it should be a decent amount of uh time and as you can see it fits perfectly into this uh piece of olive wood so there you go the original incense holders of this part of the world were perhaps people putting these incense sticks uh into olive wood and uh that's it this a uh, beauty about using incense uh, this way as opposed to you know your whole thurible charcoal resin setup is it's much more uh, kind of user friendly so I'm just going to go here and light the incense. I'm going to give it a bit more of a start here. Try to keep the blue part of the flame on the incense. And there we go. We have our uh, incense in operation here. And I'm uh, burning uh, my first incense, stink, fr uh, incense stick frankincense from uh, Desert Scent. Uh, looks like I might need a bit more uh, a bit more time, but you can see the frankincense. Uh, woo, very very strong, starting to waft over. I'm going to put it a little bit of, at a at a distance, and uh, it's uh, you can see it started to burn now. So if you're looking for uh, to get into the world of uh, resin incense and incense in uh, in Israel, uh, there is a guy Yigal Adiv. His brand name is uh, Desert Sense Desert Scent incense 
and he uh, said that he told he was telling me that he lives in the north of Israel, but he goes to these kind of what I would call uh, from uh, from Ireland farmers markets, these kind of artisanal markets uh, throughout Israel. So he's very friendly. You can uh, hit him up on uh, WhatsApp or sorry on Instagram. Facebook or uh, send him a WhatsApp. His phone number is there and I'm sure he'll be happy to tell you uh, when he's going to be next around your part of the world. 60 shackles for this 10 pack of incense and I was able to uh, select them and he also gave me like advice on uh, what, what types I should try. Very, very friendly guy. And my friend who uh, fortuitously I met over Purim swears by this as good quality stuff. She doesn't trust any incense and says that this uh, this stuff is top quality and I think that for artisanal artisanally made carefully sourced incense I think that 60 shackles for 10 which works out of course to six shackles per stick I think is very uh, reasonable hope that video was interesting a break from the usual programming about uh, gen general stuff around Israel if you want to get more videos uh, from me more topics coming up about uh, Israel and Jerusalem, uh, then uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you for uh, joining me today on this video.